the speaker right before me was a guy named Dr. John Walker. He's a famous psychiatrist out of San Antonio. And Dr. Walker was in his presentation said that one out of three people in our culture during their lifetimes will uh, suffer severe mental problems. One out of three people uh, in, in our culture during their lifetimes will suffer severe mental problems. And so as you were looking these three people in the eyes, if they appear to be normal, then you're it, okay? So, <laughs> it's a joke. Right? <laughs> Joined the U.S. Marine Corps right out of high school. Uh, by the way, any of you know what was going on in 68? called the Vietnam War, okay, and I graduated in 68 and joined the Marine Corps right out of high school. I've been going steady with the same girlfriend at Edison Junior High School since the seventh grade, and we went all the way through Edison and Milby together, we graduated together in 68, she wanted to do what all our friends were doing, and that was get married, and I thought, <laughs> man, I'm 18, and I think that's a little too young to be getting married, so I was trying to, wait to, uh, trying to figure a way to pa tactfully postpone the wedding. So I told her, honey, I want to go to college, but I don't have parents to send me to school, so somebody's going to have to help me go through college. And I said, hey, the military will do that. So I joined the Marine Corps, and it, for me, it was either going to be Vietnam or marriage. And I thought, man, I'll take the I took the easy one. I graduated. I got out of the Marine Corps as an enlisted Marine. I was a private uh, and got out as a last corporal, went uh, back to school at the University of Houston, got my degree uh, and, uh, in psychology. The Marine Corps, by the way, I was trying to get back in the Marine Corps as an officer, and they didn't care what your degree was in. You just had to have a degree. And I'll tell you the impact that you as teachers will have. When I was in the seventh grade at, Mil uh, at uh, Edison Junior High School, I had a teacher, his name was Jack Davis. And he took us, he had a private pilot license, and he took several students up to fly on an airplane. When I got down off that airplane, I told him, Mr. Davis, you just set the goal for me. I said, I want to fly airplanes, but I don't want to fly just any propeller, little propeller airplane. I want to fly jets. And for some reason, I'd read a, a book that said, pilots that can land jets off of aircraft carriers tend to be some of the best pilots in the world. So that became my goal and dream when I became a 13-year-old seventh grader at Edison Junior High School because of the impact of one teacher. In, in Dan Baker's book, he also talks about one other thing. He talks about that we are programmed subconsciously through two primary fears, and I've discovered there's actually three. But there's two big fears that everybody has subconsciously. We're not aware of it. But it's working on us every day, all of us. And through evolutionary psychology, these fears are there, and we need to learn to override them every day. And by the way, the first primary fear, if you think about this for a minute, our ancestors, you know, 100,000 years ago when they were out there in the bush somewhere, they weren't very fast. The animals could catch them and eat them. And so their survival every day, they didn't know how to plant food or anything. They just had to go find berries, nuts, any dead animals, anything they could eat. So their survival was always in question, and whether they were going to be good enough to survive, fast enough, or smart enough to survive was always in question. So through thousands and thousands of years of evolution, one of our biggest fears in life is, am I going to be good enough? Am I good enough? And that's a primary fear that's already in everyone there. All of us have that subconscious fear about not being good enough. Your students have it, you have it, that's why we've got to override it. And part of what I'm talking to you today is a way of overriding that primary fear of not being good enough. That's why I ask you to say the affirmation, I am calm and relaxed and I recognize my own self-worth. I am good enough and my life is easy and joyful. So you learn to start putting a list of affirmations to work always getting those affirmations and saying them over and over again. You are impacting children every single day, and I want you to realize how important is the impact that you are having on these children every day. So let's get started. The next slide. We won't go through that because uh, we're going to have to kind of speed it up. Go ahead and go through the next one. All right. 
I want to teach you just a little bit about what's called Neuro Linguistic Programming, NLP. And Neuro Linguistic Programming is a branch of psychology that deals how language affects our neurology, our brain, and how language, the way that we use words, the way we use structure, words, phrases, questions, affects our neurology, our brain, and how we get programmed through language. So how you talk to people, how you talk to yourself, is affecting your performance and their performance as well. So it's learning to use language a little bit differently and to create thoughts that are much more positive in people. All right? So I'm going to give you some examples. By the way, how many of you know that you talk to yourself? How many of you talk to yourself? Okay, everybody does. Psychologists say that we talk to ourselves roughly about 200 to 300 words a minute. That dialogue is constantly going on. How many of you answer yourself, too? Any of you? Okay, so some of you are saying, hey, if I want to talk to somebody that's intelligent, I'll talk to myself. Right? So, so if we are constantly carrying on a dialogue internally, and we're also carrying on a dialogue externally with other people and with those students that we teach. So part of this is how we're programmed through repetition. By the way, advertisers know that if they repeat a message to you over and over again, you will be programmed till the day you die with that message. You know, I've been around so many years, you, can, you already guessed my age. I'm going to be 70 year, old, 70 year old in March. So I've been around a long, long time. So most of the commercials that I used to use in my talks don't work for you, all right? But let me ask you a question. What are some of the commercials that you've heard over and over again that you know the answer instantly? Like a good neighbor? And you are, you repeat it instantly <laughs> because you've heard it so many times. You already know what it is. So through repetition, spaced repetition, they constantly keep saying it over and over, and now you're programmed. You're just going to follow me, all right? And I've got hundreds of affirmations, all right? But let's just try this one, all right? When I say, who are you, you're going to say, we are teachers at Herrera Elementary School, all right? We are teachers, and we are second to none. All right, so we are teachers at Atlanta Elementary School, and we are second to none. Ready? All right, who are you? We are teachers at Atlanta Elementary School, and we are second to none. I can't hear you. We are teachers at 